Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me. Today's message is going to bless you. It's going to uplift you. It, it's it's going to produce some great miracles and, and great revelations upon your life. I truly believe that. I know it within my heart. Today's message is strictly for you. All right. And I know this. All right. But before we get started, all right, we're going to pray. But let, let me take a moment to thank everybody for tuning in all the time, watching it on Facebook, watching it on YouTube, watching it on our website. Whoever's listening, thank you guys. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing it all, all the time, and thank you. So just continue to bless others by doing all those things and, and continue to bless others by sharing this word with, with others. Uh, um, and thank you guys, all right? Uh, here at David Gomez Ministries, all right, davidgomezministries.com. Uh, go in there, check it out. There's a lot of good stuff on there. There's some prayers. There's you want to reach out to us by email, or or if you want to message us or see or, or, or inbox us, whatever uh, your prayer requests are, send it over to us, all right. And um, we before we get started, let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We thank you for. For what you're about to do in our lives today, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your message, to be able to receive your miracles, your salvation, your revelation, Lord God, your breakthrough, Lord God, and, and, and just your blessings, Lord God. We thank you for that, and we honor you this morning, Lord God. We want to hear from you this morning, Lord God. We want to make it the best day today. We thank you, Lord God, in your precious name. Amen, amen, amen. I hope you guys are ready, okay? I hope you guys are ready, okay? In today's message, we're going to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 43, okay? 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 43, all right? 43 to 44, all right? And we're talking about the prophet Elijah, all right? This was a man, a mighty man of God. He was a prophet of God and a prophet, okay? If you don't know, if, if you're a new Christian and you don't know what a prophet is, a prophet is somebody that brings you the word. It, it, he is speaking it straight from God, all right? And a prophecy is a spoken word upon your life that shall come to pass, okay? That, that is coming in your life. That's a prophecy. So it's, 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 it's futuristic. It's telling you what your future and what God is going to do in your life. That is a prophecy. All right. And so uh, Elijah was a prophet of God. All right. And, and, and what happened is he goes to the King Ahab. All right. And King Ahab was a terrible king. He was an evil king, so much that it angered God, all right? He said that he did the worst out of all the kings that came before him. He was the worst, all right? There was a lot of evil things going on, a lot of destruction. This king was evil, all right? He was killing all the Christians, and he was ordering people to, to uh, uh, worship a different God and all kinds of sins, all right? And so... God told Elijah, go unto him and tell him this, there's going to be a drought, all right? And so Elijah goes and he tells him, there's going to be a drought. There, there will, there's not going to be any rain until I speak it again. And so, and then God orders him to leave. God orders Elijah to leave. And he does. And there was a big famine. There was a big drought throughout the land, all right? And three years later, the drought, three years later, I mean, the land was dry, guys. There, there, there was uh, no food, no water. Uh, uh, you know, the animals didn't have food or water to, because, you know, you, you, you need the water to produce the crops, right? 
all you farmers out there, you know how this is true, all right? And so that's what happened. And so three years later, uh, um, God finally tells Elijah to go back, all right? And he tells the king, and the king sees him, and he's like, oh, you troublemaker, there you are, of Israel. He goes, you troublemaker. And he, Elijah goes, I'm not the troublemaker, you are. All this is happening because of you, all right? And so, and so there he is, he challenges all these other prophets and their God, and, and obviously he wins, and I'm not going to go to that specific story, and you can read it in, in chapter 18. But after he challenges us, all the, all the prophets of this king and, and, and all the false prophets and the, the gods that they were, you know, uh, they were worshiping and all these things, and, and, and they find out that God is the true God, that the God of Elijah was the true God of Israel, all right? And, he, and, and people start repenting, and Israel repents, and, and what happens is Elijah goes, and he tells this. In verse 41, he said, And Elijah said to Ahab, the king, Go eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of, the, of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. So he goes, there's rain coming. So go ahead and go eat, go drink. There, there is rain coming, okay? At this specific moment, there was not a cloud in the sky. But Elijah was believing on the word of God. And so he tells him, and then he goes up to the mountain and he puts his head down and he begins to pray. And then, check this out. Elijah's praying. And then after he's done praying, verse 43, go, okay, go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. So Elijah tells his servant, go towards the sea. Go look at the sea, all right? And the servant, and he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. So he tells the servant, go towards the sea and look. See if rain's coming. The servant comes back. There's nothing there, Elijah. Watch this. The servant said, there's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. So he tells his servant, the prophet Elijah tells his servant, okay, go and check the sea. God's going to make it rain. The drought is over. God's going to produce some heavy rain now. And the servant goes, he goes to the sea, he looks out, uh, there's no clouds. Goes back, tells Elijah, there's, there's no clouds, there, there's nothing. So Elijah goes, go check again. So the servant goes out, he looks, comes back, there's nothing. Elijah's like, go check again. He goes back. Checks, nothing, comes back, nothing. There's nothing, Elijah. Go check again. Seven times, you guys, seven times he commanded his servant to go and check. On the seventh time, the servant looks, he's like, oh, I see a little tiny, is that a little tiny cloud? That's about the size of my fist, a little tiny cloud. He comes back, he's like, all right, Elijah, I saw a little tiny cloud, a small little cloud, as, as small as my fist. Elijah praises God, right? And he tells, he tells, go tell Ahab to hurry up and go before the rain washes him out. What? Out of this little tiny cloud? See, that's faith, you guys. That is faith. See, 
Often in life, we don't appreciate the small beginnings. Those things that start us out small in our lives. We don't appreciate them. The small beginnings, the small things. It only takes a small level of faith to produce a big miracle in your life. Elijah knew this. He saw a small little cloud, persistent in his faith. Go check again. Oh, you see a small little cloud? I told you it was happening. I knew it was going to happen. God's going to make it rain upon this place. Right? A small little thing. That small little thing, Elijah knew that God would make a big miracle out of that small little cloud. Thank you, Jesus. This is a word for somebody today. I hope you're hearing me. I hope you're hearing me. Hmm. See, it starts with something small. A gesture. Maybe a thought. Maybe a belief. Something small, you guys. It starts with something small. Right? Small beginnings. A thought, a belief, a gesture. You give somebody, you see a homeless man, it starts with a small gesture and God produces miracles out of it. A small belief that you know through the, through the trials and the struggles and the, the pain and all these things that God's going to bring you through. A small belief that produces a huge faith, it starts with small. Jesus said that if you believe that if you only have faith as small as a mustard seed, which is very tiny, that you will say to the mountain, move, and you will cast it out, it starts with something small. See? A small change in your diet, a small change in your workout, a small change in direction can change your whole life. Hmm. I'll give you an example. Let's just say you're on the I-40, and that's a, that's a freeway. If you don't know the I-40, it connects all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. The I-40, let's just say you're going east on the I-40. And you make a little, small, little, tiny U-turn. So you're going east on the I-40. And then you make a small, little, tiny U-turn. Now, that, that didn't take a lot out of you. It didn't take a lot out of your car. Maybe you get off on the off-ramp and back on an on-ramp. It didn't take that much. But that small little U-turn is the difference between ending up in New York or ending up in Los Angeles. That small little gesture makes a huge difference in your life. The small little gesture of changing your heart with God. The small little gesture of saying, okay, God, I'm going to obey your small little U-turn. I was going this way, but now I'm going to go this way. And, and, and whoo, it changes your whole dynamics of your life. It changes the whole direction of your life, of where God is taking you. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. See, Elijah told the servant, Go look towards the sea. There's rain coming. I can feel it. Elijah felt it. He knew it. He believed it. He thought it. He believed in the promises of God. So he told the servant, go look. His servant comes back. There's nothing. Go check again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, but there's nothing. Ah. Go check again. I can feel it. There's a miracle that's about to happen in your life. I am telling you that there's something great about to happen in your life. Go check again. Oh, Pastor David, but you don't know what the struggles that I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through right now. Hey, go check again. It's gonna happen. There's a breakthrough coming. There's a miracle coming. There are blessings coming. There is something that's about to change the dynamics of your life. Go check again. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care what it looks like. Go check again. Oh, but all these things are filling. Go check again. But I don't see it. I don't see nothing. Go check again. That's what God is saying. Go check again. Until you see that little tiny thing and you're like, I think I see it. I see something. I can feel something. God's about to do something. Whatever you've been believing for, that breakthrough, that miracle, whatever is happening in your life, whether you want cancer to be gone, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. You tell that doctor, go check again. It is gone in the name of Jesus. Go check again. Oh, but my, but my son is on uh, drugs and oh, my, my wife or my husband and all these things. Uh, go check again. A breakthrough is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go check again. Keep on checking until you see that little cloud. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. See, and I can hear it now. I can hear it now. God's about to rain down on you. Just like Elijah said. I, I, I can hear somebody saying, Pastor David, how can you talk about blessings? How can you talk about miracles? How can you talk about blessings upon our lives when you see all the things that are going on in this world? You see the suffering, the pain, the hurt, all the people dying, all the politicians and this and that. This is the same thing that was going on in this story. This politician called a king was doing evil things around the world. Thank you, Jesus. There was a famine around the world. There was all these things that were hurting people. There was killing people. Christians were being killed. People didn't have nothing to eat. All these things were happening. And God still produces miracles. Yes, God. Yes, God. At the time of crisis, all right, when there was famine and all these things, God sent the ravens to feed Elijah. He said, I am sending you some ravens to feed you bread and meat to eat. God still produces. God is still here. He is still a healer. He is still a miracle worker. He is still El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is all God. He is all magnificent. He is the Lord Almighty of this world. He still rules over all these kingdoms, over all these politicians. They will have to meet God at judgment day. He will take care of it. But when he's telling you, when he's telling you, he's got something for you. Go check again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, I believe in a God that is powerful and I do not put him in a box. However, God's gonna produce a miracle, let him decide. Whether he brings ravens to feed you just think of the craziness that that is. That is out of this world. He sent the ravens to feed Elijah. Yes, God. He uses all things. He does all things. He uses all things. Amen. 
Do not put God in a box. God is saying, go check again. Do you believe that? Go check again. You've been calling out to God. God is answering today. God is answering you today. Go check. If you don't see it, keep on believing. Go check again. Day after day. I don't see it. Okay. Wake up the next day. Okay. God's doing it. God's doing it. Okay. I didn't, he didn't do it today. Okay. Wake up the next day. God's doing it. God's doing it. Okay. He didn't do it that day. Wake up the next day. God's doing it. God's doing it. See, you have to understand I've had many times in those situations where I didn't know what I was going to do and I was believing God for a miracle, for a breakthrough in my life. My life depended on it. And I would get up and I know I'd say, God, I know you're doing it. And I didn't see nothing. The next day, God, I know you're doing it. Nothing. Next day, God, I know you're doing it. Nothing. God, I know you're doing it. I know you're able. I know you can. I know you can. I know you're doing it. I am standing on your promise. Until one day, I checked again. <laughs> yes, God. And he does it. He does it. Amen. I hope this message has blessed you. Go check again. Listen, if you need to replay this message and check it again in order for you to comprehend it in your mind, do it. Do it again. Keep on playing it throughout this whole week. Rewind it. Check it. Play it again until you get it deep down in your soul. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And start praising him. Start thanking God for what he's about to do in your life. I thank you for joining. And, 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 and I am so fired up. I am believing with you. All right. Before we leave, I want to pray with you. All right. Thank you. Send this to somebody. They need to hear it. Amen. I had to check my microphone, make sure it's on. <laughs> like, oh my God, what if it was never on? Thank you, Jesus. But listen, send this to somebody. Somebody needs to hear it. And then keep on replaying it. Keep on replaying it until you get it deep down in your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. Lord, touch the people right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch them right now. Heal them right now. We rebuke COVID in the name of Jesus out of their bodies, out of their minds, out of their lungs right now in the name of Jesus. We guard our family, the blood of Jesus upon our children and upon our, our, our wives, our husbands, Lord God, our family, Lord God. We thank you for them, Lord God. Protect them, Lord God. Protect us while we're at our jobs, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the, the miracles that you're about to do, Lord God. We're standing on your word, Lord God. We're standing in faith, believing you, Lord God. And every day, every minute, every second, we're going to check. We're going to keep on looking for that miracle, Lord God. We're going to check for the blessing, Lord God. We know it's coming, Lord God. Our breakthrough, it's coming in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you today, Lord God. Let us have good spirits, Lord God, and keep on praising you until we believe it, Lord God, until we see that little fist of a cloud breakthrough, miracle, blessing that you have for us. Lord God, we want more of you in our lives, Lord God, and less of us. So, Lord, get us out of our mentality, Lord God, and let us realize uh, uh, your spirit within us, Lord God. Lord, forgive us of our sins, Lord God. We thank you for dying on the cross for us. We thank you for rising. And, and Lord, we thank you, and we want you to be our Lord and personal Savior. We thank you, Lord God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Go share this word. Be the love of Christ that he has made you to be. God bless you. Until next time, check us out on the website, davidgomezministries.com. See you next time. God bless.